one of the key abilities of Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central is that it supports multiple languages. We can be able to display the UI in different languages and we can be able to change it in our settings. For instance, this UI at the moment is displayed in German. I can be able to change the language. This is language from German to maybe uh, Greece, which I'm not familiar with. So some of the features uh, will be displayed in uh, Greece. And OK, this is an ability that we can be able to translate. We can be able to create the same in our code. And we can see this Greece is quite <laughs> uh something that i don't even know and uh yeah here it is but we can be able to uh, create the same in our localization for our own extensions actually for our app source submission we need translation files and um in our visual studio code the first thing that we need to create is uh translation file we need to just set a setting that uh, apart from the features this is a features array that allows several features to be added into our application so one of them is the translation file so adding this translation file will make visual studio code generate a translation file Okay, so in this video, we'll be able to just look at a very simple example of a translation and how we can be able to easily translate uh, this file. So stay tuned. Okay, so we'll just look at this table and we'll translate it to our language of choice. So the first step, add the translation file feature to your app.json. After that, go to build your application build control shift b b for boy build your application and then it will generate a translations folder with this translation file and it's in the format of xlif which is xml local interchange file lo localization interchange file format this is a an industry standard for translation files and we can use some tools to be able to translate but ideally when you have such a thing such a file it defines the source language and the target language at the moment it still has the source as the US and the target as US and when you look at our file what the translation does it picks in the caption and the tooltips uh, actually the caption ml is will be deprecated so caption tooltips and in our caption by extension we can even add something like a comment you can say it's locked maybe you don't want a translation to it several properties have been added to this maximum length you can add that in our caption okay so the next step we uh, ideally anytime we build this file will be generated so if you modify this file which is named after our project name then it will be overwritten by uh, a build function so we need to copy the file and have a separate file for our distinct language but to enable us manage that easily there is an extension uh, for x uh, xml localization interchange file format and uh, this is the extension XLI, XLIF sync. And we can use this, which is it's easier for us because when you install this extension, then w when once you build, it will be easier for us to create a translation file. And uh, you do control shift P, you'll be able to see that if you type XLIF, then you have all these. Uh, functions that you can be able to do and it's easier to synchronize any change because if you add uh, any build modifies this so it means if you make a change to this file then it will be overwritten every time 
So we always need to create a target file for our specific language because we can do as many languages as possible. We have the ability to select multiple languages from this feature or format. And the language that we selected earlier was Greece. Greek or Greece. Let's select that language and we can get the format. They no, there's no Swahili. Okay, there is Swahili. Let's select Swahili. But unfortunately, on the other side, there's no ability to, in Business Central, we don't have this uh, option to select Swahili. But let me just add. And then click OK. It will generate two files. And we can see we do have the, the Greek file and uh, the Swahili file. Another tool that we need, let me just go to... I reveal in the file extension. If I right click on this, there is this open, and uh, if I'm to open with, there is the multilingual app toolkit editor. I'll share a link to download this. This is the file that will enable us easily translate. Because ideally, in this file, what we need to have is a target. Target is saying the state is needs translation. So we need to have something sort of uh, maybe target and uh, the state will be translated maybe. It should be translated. But now target will be something like this. It's a file that will be open and the translation will sit in here. So ideally modifying this manually is a daunting task and that's why we have the tool that you can use because it's easier to modify so let me open in file explorer and if i'm to open with this is the multilingual app toolkit editor so let me right click and then open with the multilingual app toolkit editor and this editor gives me it summarizes what needs to be changed out of that jargon file of the XML localization interchange file format, I'm able to get a simpler file that is easier for me to modify. And the local translation is here. This is the file. This is the caption of the table. I had called it Kalimani, but I've renamed it to local translation. And you can see this is the, uh, the Greek file that is here. So if I'm to probably just use this local translation and use Depel to translate from English to Greek. Where is Greek? To Greek. So this is the translation for my first instance. And I use the same for description description this is the Greek the Greek translation for description I paste it here I click on the code how is the code written in Greek okay Greek is just something else huh? and finally the address Let's work with the address and uh, set it that, it that way. And then save this file. Once we save the file, we'll see that in our Greek file, let me close this file. There's a conflict when it's opened by two files. Let me save it again. Save it to update it on the other side. And I believe now our Greek file will be well translated. And here is our translation file. Uh, the Swahili, let me leave it there. Still needs translation. But again, if I build, then I won't be affecting this Greek file, but this one will be affected. 
So once I have this file synchronized, I can be able to build and see, open this particular table in Greek, the 5149, okay, it's supposed to be 149 here, and then we see how it will be displayed on the other side. I'll start debugging. And we can be able to see the how to get started with these translations. So it's pretty easy using the tools. Uh, you are uh, doing it manually looks kind of tricky. And there's also a version of Azure text. Uh, it's text translator that you can be able to link with this um, multilingual, what is it called? multilingual editor so that you can have automatic translation or suggestions of translation. So I'll, uh, of course it's in Greek already, but I need to display the table, which is 5149. And here we are with our table, we want to see if the localization is, yes, it's in Greek. This is the translation. I don't even understand what is this. Thanks to DPL and technology, I can still be able to translate my file in a way that I don't even understand. Maybe if I had a Greek client, then I'll be able to do this. But this is not the work of a developer, ideally, do, doing the translation. You can be able to share the translation files to them after you have generated and give them this tool uh, to be able to translate for you the multilingual editor because it will translate the XLIF files and you'll be able to save them in a format that is already translated and it will be compatible to Visual Studio Code and can be used for your translation. So that's it for this video. I'll share a link for to the Microsoft LAN for more details. Uh, just go through it. It is like a 30 minute read, which is really valuable. Maybe there's something I haven't mentioned, which is part of that official documentation of Microsoft. Uh, just go through it. It has a, a very good information about the translation and the use of multi-language functionality in Business Central. So I will see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, Make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the next one.